If you've followed my channel for a while, maybe you've noticed that I tend to go on imagination overload, as I continuously ask myself what could have happened if these situations played out differently. Today, I'm looking at this question through the lens of some of the greatest performances of NBA history, specifically the all-time great performances that were cut short for one reason or another. What if those players remained in the game until the final buzzer sounded? What kind of records would we be looking at today, and how would it change our perceptions of those legends? Today, I'll do my best to answer that as we marvel at what was and what could have been. The majority of this video is dominated by two players specifically, and the first of those is Kobe Bryant. Kobe was known to heat up quickly as an offensive player, and although that attribute translated to many historic evenings, several of those never even saw a fourth quarter. Kobe had five games in his career where he scored over 50 points through the first three quarters, and in only one of those games did he actually play in the fourth quarter, and unsurprisingly, that happened to be the night he scored 81 points. The first time he did that was on January 14, 2002, against the Memphis Grizzlies. Shaq had been suspended for several games for basically trying to end Brad Miller on the spot. Fortunately, Shaq is more accurate with his free throws than his punches. Without the big fella available down low, Kobe took it upon himself to carry the Lakers offensively, and that's exactly what he did, as the Mamba was blazing throughout, dropping 56 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists on 61.8% shooting. The Lakers were up by 39 points at the end of the third quarter, so he sat out the entirety of the fourth. Considering how Kobe had 53 points through three quarters of the 81 game, at the very least, he had a chance of reaching 80 points on this evening as well. The second instance was February 12, 2003 against the Denver Nuggets. Once again, Shaq was not available during the stretch, so Kobe had to lead the Lakers offensively. This was actually the third game of Kobe's famous streak of nine straight 40-point games, and this was probably the most impressive. Through three quarters of play, Kobe had amassed a total of 51 points, three rebounds, two assists, and two steals on 53.6% shooting. Due to this one-man onslaught, his Lakers were up by 33 points at the end of the third quarter, and once again, Kobe didn't play a second of the fourth quarter. The third instance was on December 20th, 2005 against the Dallas Mavericks. You all know about this game, so I won't talk about it too long. But this was Kobe's famous 62 points in only three quarters, which is arguably the most impressive scoring performance of all time. It was nine points more than what Kobe had through three quarters in the 81 point game. If Kobe had a fourth quarter just like the third quarter of this game, or like the fourth quarter of the Raptors game, then he would have finished with 90 or 92 points. Honestly, I don't even think that's the craziest thing he passed up by sitting out the fourth quarter. At the end of the third, the scoreboard read the Mavericks 61, Kobe 62. In the history of the league, no single player has ever finished with more points than the opposing team, and Kobe had a very realistic shot of achieving it on this evening. Keep in mind that he nearly did this against a Mavericks team that was in the better half of the league defensively, and went on to the NBA Finals that season. Instead, Kobe settled with a mere total of 62 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 steals on 58.1% shooting. The last instance that Kobe did this was on November 30th, 2006 against the Utah Jazz. It didn't matter that the Mamba was being guarded by the defensively elite Andre Kirilenko, as he had one of the most efficient scoring explosions of his career. At one stretch, he hit 11 straight shots without a miss, en route to a third quarter stat line of 52 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists on 73.1% shooting. With the Lakers up by 22 points at the end of the third quarter, the Mamba comfortably rested the remainder of the evening. If the Mamba had played in the fourth quarter of each of these games, then we're looking at a resume today of a handful of 70-point games, several 80-point games, and possibly even a 90-point performance. If anyone ever bothers to call Kobe a stat patter, gently remind them of all the stats that the Mamba passed up. On December 5th, 2016, against the Indiana Pacers, Clay had his own three-quarter eruption. 
Many people describe Thompson as the ultimate catch-and-shoot type of player, and no game sums that up better than this one. He didn't need to play in the fourth quarter. In fact, he only played 29 minutes of the game, and in that time, he dropped 60 points on 63.6% .6 shooting. He did all of this on only 11 dribbles in the game, which speaks to his talent and his unique skill set. Clay is one of only two players to score at least 50 points in less than 30 minutes of playing time. The other player we'll get to later in the video. Thanks to this dominant display, his Warriors were up by 33 points at the end of the third, which is why he didn't see a second of the fourth. Another clay onslaught was cut short on January 23rd, 2015 against the Sacramento Kings. This is where Thompson famously set the record for the most points ever scored in a single quarter when he dropped 37. He finished the game with 52 points, 5 assists, 2 rebounds, 4 steals, and 2 blocks on 64% shooting. In that iconic quarter, he made up 37 of the Warriors' 41 points. His third quarter was literally perfect, as he went 13 of 13 from the field, 9 of 9 from 3-point range, and 2 of 2 from the free throw line. The thing is, because of the blowout, he only played in 2 minutes and 32 seconds of the fourth quarter. Not only was he sitting on 52 with a significant amount of game left, but he had also made 11 threes at that point. If he had remained in the game, he could have possibly got the NBA record for the most three-pointers made in a single game. Speaking of which, the last Klay Thompson game was on October 29th, 2018, and what I believe is his most interesting what-if on this list. It was against the lowly Chicago Bulls, who had no answer for his sniping throughout. On this evening, Klay set the NBA record for the most three-pointers made in a single game, with a total of 14. But what's absurd is that he set this record with 4 minutes and 53 seconds left in the third quarter. Not only did Clay not play in the fourth, but he didn't play in the final 16 minutes of the game. Not only could Clay have added to his impressive totals of 52 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 steals, but he also could have amassed a total of 3 pointers that may have never been challenged for as long as we live. On November 30th, 2019, James Harden exploded for one of his highest scoring contests against the Atlanta Hawks. This was during the peak of Harden's prime as a scorer, as the lowly Hawks had no answers for him anywhere on the court, as he dropped 60 points, 8 assists, 3 rebounds, and 3 steals on 66.7% shooting. I'm sure there's a part of Harden that wanted to play, as reaching the 80 point threshold would obviously do a tremendous amount for his legacy. But if he had continued to play, it would have been the most unnecessary fourth quarter on this list, as the Rockets were leading the Hawks by as many as 50 points in the third quarter. On February 9, 2019, Damian Lillard had a career night, lighting up the Sacramento Kings in only three quarters. He's yet another player who becomes extremely dangerous as he warms up from the perimeter, and the Kings learn that the hard way, as he poured in 50 points, 6 assists, and 3 steals on 61.5% shooting, including 8 three-pointers. He did that incredible stat line in only 29 minutes of play, which put him right beside Klay Thompson as the only players to ever reach 50 points in less than 30 minutes of game time. The Blazers had an 18-point lead at the end of the third, and the reserves held strong, allowing Lillard to spend the entirety of the fourth quarter on the bench. For this next one, we're going way back in time. On April 9, 1978, the Iceman, George Gervin, put on a show for the ages. This evening in the NBA was actually pretty fascinating, as it was the last night of the regular season, and the Celtics legend John Havlicek was playing his final game, which drew all of the media's attention. Unfortunately, that meant that the scoring race and the performances of David Thompson and George Gervin were not caught on film. David Thompson dropped 73 points to take the lead of the league scoring crown ahead of Gervin. George would then need to score 49 points against the New Orleans Jazz to take the scoring crown back from Thompson, and he was well aware of this. Well, Gervin scored 53 points in the first half. With their playoff seating already locked in place, Gervin stayed in the game just long enough to pass David Thompson, as he finished with 63 points, 2 rebounds, and 2 steals on 46.9% shooting. His spurs were blown out 153-132, to but it was never about that as San Antonio was content to rest their stars for the playoffs. Gervin didn't play in the fourth quarter and played only a total of 33 minutes. 
At the very least, an 80-point performance was in the realm of possibility if George really wanted it. The last performance on this list has a different spin to it. It came from Larry Bird on February 18, 1985 against the Utah Jazz. During his prime, Larry was known for filling up a stat sheet, but one game summed that up better than any other. In a blowout victory, Larry Legend put up a total of 30 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, and 9 steals on 59.1% shooting. The thing is, Larry didn't even play in the fourth quarter. Even crazier than that, he only played 33 minutes. Only four players in NBA history have ever achieved the illustrious quadruple double, but none of those players did it in three quarters. At that point in history, only one player had achieved the quadruple double. Not only could he have easily been only the second player to do it if he had simply played in the fourth quarter, but he had also tied the NBA record for the most steals in a game with nine. Just one more steal would have secured the record as his own, but Larry truly only cared about winning, so he passed that up too. So now it's your turn. I've got two questions for you guys. One, which one of these performances was the most impressive? And two, if you could see only one of these performances played out till the final buzzer, which game would it be? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.